When you suck at life, the go-to position in 2019 is to place blame on everyone's favorite demographic, the straight white male. It seems this is what KT Roberts, who could be the poster child for bitter people that just don't measure up, so they decide to lash out, and the rest of us normal people get to have a good laugh, is doing. Now that we've got a female Thor, let's topple every pale male and stale superhero character we can. I can't see anybody having a problem with that, can you? Stealing a few spots from original characters at the front of the box office race is not only positive but absolutely necessary if underrepresented actors are to have a fighting chance. Stealing! A synonym for equity and diversity because when you just aren't as good at something as others or are unwilling to put in the same degree of effort then just cry discrimination and then you get handed stuff without having to actually earn it. 2019 folks superhero movies are important that's not an opinion it's just true. Correction! Superhero Hero movies were important, but if MCU Phase 4 has anything to say about it, they won't be important for much longer. Avengers Endgame is the top box office film of all time, largely because of its mostly, but not completely, long-term cast of mostly white males. Oh, how the truth must hurt. Ranking in at 2.79 billion and watched by millions. Jealousy is one of the deadly sins, dear. Superheroes get bums on seats, and sneaking in social justice messages under the radar is a tried and tested way of speaking to the masses. No, it's not. It's just a sure way to make people walk away in droves. 90% of the population either doesn't care or utterly despises your twisted and hateful ideology. Reality, dear. It's called reality. These stories have always been about underdogs proving their worth or those who are other finding their place by earning it, which is not what you people propose. And the recent wave of heroes who truly reflect these traits is one we should cheer as it builds into a tsunami. A tsunami that has dredged in nothing but human shit. Since Saturday's announcement of a female Thor, the internet has blown up with people wailing that its historically straight white male pool of superheroes is being drained for a more diverse roster. We get irritated by forced diversity, you idiot. There's nothing wrong with natural diversity, but we don't see that anymore now, do we? Many can be safely ignored. Yep, just stick your finger in your ears and go la la la, and I'm certain that reality will just go away. I saw one person on social media bemoaning the betrayal of the North Smiths, a complaint curiously absent for Thor Ragnarok. I'd love to know which myth has Jeff Goldblum swanning about in an orgy spaceship. It's more entertaining than anything you could dish up. It's the ostensibly more reasonable complaints of I don't mind female POC, LGBT plus characters, but why can't can't they make their own? That nettles me. Yes, I'm sure it does. I'm sure many things do, dear, because make no mistake, we are. Everybody get ready, because the fail train is about to pull in. Villain Interrupted, my play about supervillains in prison therapy, runs at the Camden Fringe in August, highlighting my point perfectly. And here goes the self-shilling. What this proves is that you are bitter because nobody wants to see your crappy little social justice play. Original characters, this should be good. Even the ones created by behemoths, like Marvel or DC, have nothing like the tradition of old favorites, meaning we're starting the race seconds before the big boys cross the finish line. There's nothing wrong with falling flat on your face at the starting point. It happens to the best of us. Well, not really. Stealing a few of their spots at the front is not only positive, but absolutely necessary. Stealing is what you people do best, and the delusion provides us with endless entertainment. Quite apart from anything else, it genuinely makes the art better and bigger. No, what it does is create a steaming pile of bullshit. Audiences tire of the same old stories. So let's give them crap. Told by the same old people. Those dirty white men. With the same old characters just dressed up in different superpowers. Who cares about whether or not people like these heroes? Look at the success of films like Black Panther, Captain Marvel. Yep, and Captain Nasty has done a wonderful job of endearing herself to Marvel fans. Or the aforementioned Thor Ragnarok. Probably to be known as the last good Thor movie, which took a risk, hired a minority director. No, it wasn't a risk. They hired the best person for the job, which isn't you. Let's let him get on with his frankly insane. You're talking about the fact that the film starred a charismatic straight white male that everyone liked, aren't you? Oh, how terrible. Ideas and reap the rewards in the form of a massive box office smash. 854 million. Fawned over by critics. How dare they like that white dude? Don't 
worry, they hate white dudes in 2019. Likewise, Into the Spider-Verse reimagined Spider-Man as a black teen graffiti artist and won an Academy Award and $375.5 million at the box office. I liked it. And again, it's better than any crap your ilk could ever turn out. It clearly makes for more successful movies with better bottom lines, which a cynic might say is all Hollywood cares about. Well, dear, the film industry was built on making a profit. Now they're about to do a face plant because they have seemingly forgot about this one little fact. And man, it's fun to watch. But just consider the raw potential harnessed by films seen by millions. Not in modern Hollywood, they won't much longer, giving audience superheroes and spies and princesses different to themselves normalizes diversity and pisses people off when it's forced in a way targeted campaigns can only dream of. Yep, let's destroy everything so the ideologues can gloat and then not even bother seeing the movie. This is the power of representation. No, it's the power of failure. I can tell you how good it felt to watch women, plural, fight alongside the men in Endgame. That scene that completely took most people out of the film. And how disappointing it was to have Marvel swerve an off-screen or it doesn't count bisexual superhero in the form of Valkyrie, something they have pledged to correct in Phase 4. Yep, basing an entire character on one characteristic only is sure to have audiences racing to theaters. So yeah, Yes, let's plunder the male heroes. There's that stealing thing again. And Thor is an excellent place to start because it went over so well when they did it in the comics. There's a simple mechanism by which someone else can gain his powers. Yes, theft, as shown in Endgame with Steve Rogers, to whoops of glee from the fanboys now complaining. As I said, go out of your way to piss off your primary audience. Brilliant marketing strategy. Plus, Marvel women have a history of relegation to the sappy love interest, or worse. Oh, there is so much bitterness here. That feisty girl whose only power is the super boyfriend backing her up. Envy is a sin, dear. Jane Foster's a particular victim of this casual mistake. Misogyny. She spent 2011's Thor demanding S.H.I.E.L.D. give her back her life's work. They capitulate when Thor asks. And the sequel Thor, The Dark World, as a swooning damsel showing her mettle by giving Loki a good slap while he's in cuffs and Thor is standing right there. Yep, she's gonna make a great Thor, isn't she? Natalie Portman has superhero written all over her. Finally, this is a chance for the character to, ironically, step out of Thor's shadow. Goodbye, Thor. We'll miss you. And that should be a call to arms for the rest of us, in front of and behind the cameras. Goodbye, Hollywood. We'll miss you. Well, at least Hollywood prior to 2015. Women directors are few and far between and are only just starting to helm blockbuster films without a single female lead, with Chloe Zhao directing The Eternals. Meritocracy is bad, yo. We're stepping out of the shadows, with nobody noticing or caring. And if we can step on our male predecessors along the way, all the better. Best of luck with that. KT Roberts is a film, TV, and theater writer. Bitter because she can't succeed on her own, her crappy play villain interrupted supervillains in prison therapy which nobody will watch is on at the etc theater august 7th to 11th as part of the camden fringe 2019 i hope etc saved its money and that's it for today don't forget to subscribe and make sure you're still subscribed because youtube is deleting subscribers and follow me on twitter and as always everyone thank you for watching and have a great day